What is going on my Guardian Gamers? It's I, Birdman, back with a little bit different of a video. I have been getting a lot of comments on uh, what I should be doing if I was a newer player coming in playing Titan. Um, I have been seeing a bunch of different search results for that as well, so I figured this would be an awesome topic to go over uh, and kind of do a base vanilla uh, Titan build using one specific exotic that I think could go with any subclass that you would want to use uh, if you were a new light player, so you would not have access to stasis nor strand. So this will just be for arc, solar, and void. But before I get into this entire setup, know you can follow me over on YouTube or Twitter at Birdman778. Make sure you're leaving a thumbs up on the video, commenting something that you're interested in seeing down below, whether it is for Titan, Hunter, or Warlock. Subscribe to the channel and become a member. Now, let's get right on into uh, the first part of this build, how you're able to get a certain exotic to level up your gameplay. So the exotic we're wanting to get for this setup is going to be the Heart of Inmost Light. Uh, this was actually introduced during Forsaken, and there is actually a selectable mission that you can get from Ikora Ray to access this. You have to go through kind of like a few hoops of, of missions to uh, go through this entire quest, but once you do, you will get yourself a Heart of Inmost Light, and this will essentially set you up for success for any of the three subclasses. Why? Uh, because it has a really just solid, easygoing, uh, malleable, Armor perk, it's called Overflowing Light. Using an ability, Grenade, Melee, or Barricade empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, melees and grenades do more damage, and barricades have more hit points. And you can also uh, stack this two times. So like, let's say you uh, use your melee and then activate a barrier, your grenade is gonna have a times two uh, buff on it um, once you go through that. So uh, it'll be empowered for a certain amount of time. And then also your other two abilities will also be empowered. So once they charge up, which they're gonna charge up faster, they're going to have even more potency. So you can see this is really great for literally the, any of the three subclasses because it just makes you an even better Titan with those subclasses. Now I'm gonna go over what armor mods you're gonna be wanting to use for this setup. Know that you can leave this pretty much as is for any of the three uh, subclasses we're gonna go over. They are absolutely applicable to all those and will kind of just like set you up for success. Again, kind of working with that heart of inmost light where it's just going to make you an even better Titan all around rather than focusing to one specific area. First off on our helmet, you're going to be wanting to get a hands-on and an ashes to assets. A uh, big reason why you want to do that is because it gives both your melee and your grenade extra super energy towards your, your super uh, so that you're able to get that just a little bit faster. And then I recommend a kinetic siphon. Uh, this will get you orbs of power whenever you get rapid kinetic weapon final blows. Know that there is going to be a certain weapon that we're going to use for the setup that actually has a mission that you can go through. Uh, to get one so it is a kinetic weapon so you're going to be wanting to use this on our arms you're going to be wanting an impact induction and a momentum transfer these are kind of like a yin yang they like one helps out the other and the other one helps out the other impact induction causing damage to the melee reduces your grenade cooldown and then on momentum transfer uh getting damage with the grenade helps out your melee cooldown and then i would recommend a grenade kickstart now your grenade is always going to be a little bit more powerful than your charged melee regardless, so I always recommend focusing into that, especially because most of the grenades we're going to be using for the setup are pretty freaking juicy. But big reason why you want to get this is so that you can start getting armor charges, and then you can use those armor charges to essentially get a faster cooldown on your grenade. So for all the armor charges that you're going to get, they're going to consume them, and you're going to get additional grenade energy back for each stack. Now we're going to extend upon those stacks with a few other pieces of armor throughout the setup. On your chest piece, you're going to want to get charged up. Again, this is going to adding another armor charge to your overall stack. So you're going to have a four available. Again, essentially ensuring that you're going to be getting that grenade back if you have full stacks of uh, armor charges. And then I also recommended two concussive dampeners just to help out with the area of effect damage uh, from combatants kind of makes you a little bit tankier on your legs you're going to be wanting to get a elemental charge now with all three of these subclasses we're going to have essentially like a subclass element thing that we can grab on the battlefield whether that is going to be a fire sprite ionic trace or a void breach so uh, this will essentially turn those into armor charges for you giving you another avenue to constantly have full armor charges and then finally stacks on stacks uh, picking up an orbit power or or using uh, one of those fire sprites, ionic traces, or void breaches uh, will grant you additional armor charge. So for every one you get, you'll actually get two armor charges. So again, 
definitely an easy way to constantly keep up those high stacks. Now, I would also say something like a recuperation would be really nice just to constantly keep a little bit of health in this build whenever you pick up an orb of power. And finally on the class item, double distribution, I think is really uh, useful and necessary whenever you activate your class ability, which you should be using with pretty much any of these three uh, subclasses, you're going to get a little bit of ability energy back for that and a powerful attraction to grab all those orbs of power whenever you activate that class ability. Now, something I want to mention is what stats you should be going into when you do this. For pretty much any class that you do, whether it's Titan, Hunter, or Warlock, you always want to focus into resilience first. Uh, it reduces the amount of damage you take um, all around, so we're getting about a 30% damage reduction whenever we have over 100 in this, so at the uh, 10th level. So always try to go for 100 on that first, and then second would be for your discipline, for your grenade ability. Again. Uh, your grenade is always going to be one of your most important things to do uh, so i definitely recommend getting as high into that as humanly possible and then third would be something like recovery now you notice me i'm obviously 102 different stats uh, it's because i have other pieces of armor that are high stat armor you can get a lot of those by doing the master dungeons which this build absolutely could go through any of those and do uh, and getting artifice armor that will give you that additional uh, spot here for different uh, armor mods so that you're able to get a little bit higher stats. Now I mentioned that there is a really good kinetic weapon that you can actually do a uh, quest for to get one of and that's going to be the Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo was actually introduced way way back when uh, in Destiny but it has become a huge fan favorite because of its awesome intrinsic ability. Uh, the Monte Carlo method dealing damage to this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance to fully charge your melee ability with each kill. So essentially ensuring that you're going to be getting your melee back a whole hell of a lot. So it is really good for all these ability builds that we're doing so that we constantly get access to things like our throwing shield, our throwing hammer, or even a thunder clap. It also has a second trait, the Markov chain. This weapon gains increased damage from melee kills and kills with this weapon. Melee kills bring ammo for this weapon. So uh, this can go up to times five and get you just a little bit more damage and then also as you get those melee kills you are able to just refill the mag and keep on going i unfortunately don't have the catalyst but i definitely recommend uh using it and filling it up if you get lucky enough to get it uh, it will turn the end of this uh, weapon into a glaive so that you're able to get really awesome melee damage and also will regenerate a little bit of your melee energy for you so definitely really useful now other weapons that i would recommend focusing into are things like fusion rifles i think they are extremely valuable in this game uh, and have a lot of utility and have a lot of good damage uh, always look out for ones with like vorpal in it uh, i've always loved this cartesian coordinate with lead from golden vorpal and then for your heavy weapon i'm a big fan of grenade launchers now i don't think it's an absolute must pretty much any of the you know heavy weapon types are going to be really solid but uh, if you are a beginner grenade launchers and rockets i think are going to be your best friend now let's go over all the subclasses and what you would want to do for each of them uh, depending on which one you're going to pick. First off, for Void, that's going to be Sentinel. You have two choices here for your super, the Ward of Dawn or the Sentinel Shield. Sentinel Shield will be more of a roaming super, so you're going to be running around being like Captain America, or you can hold up a giant shield, and if your uh, teammates shoot through it, they're going to get a little bit of a damage uh, buff from that, or you can go with Ward of Dawn, my personal favorite, probably like my favorite super in the entire game, uh, where you create an indestructible dome, that will actually give your uh, teammates a little bit of defense while also giving them weapons of light so that they're able to get a bit of a damage bonus from that. And it also has a super short cooldown, so it is really great with this setup and getting your super back really fast. When it comes to what shield you're gonna wanna use for this, uh, you actually have two choices. You have a towering barricade or a rally barricade. Rally is gonna be a lot shorter and only really uh, cover up like your knees more than anything, but it's also just that short cooldown is really great for a build like this with the heart of in most light, constantly getting our abilities back. Uh, but Towering Barricade is really good for covering and just making sure that you are staying as safe as possible. Uh, for your jump, that's pretty much up to you, but I recommend the Strength Jump because it just has a little bit more directional control. For your melee, you have the Shield Throw or the Shield Bash. Uh, now, I recommend using the Shield Throw because it gives a little bit more distance for you and it's just really freaking awesome to throw a shield. But if you want to do some like big AoE damage with your melee, uh, the shield bash is really freaking awesome when it comes to your grenade uh you have a lot of different options here but i think the best overall is always going to be the vortex grenade because it pulls enemies into a singular point and does a lot of damage over time and it's just really great 
uh, with one of the fragments we're gonna use in the setup. But I think two sleeper ones is always gonna be the scatter grenade or the suppressor grenade. So just keep that in mind. For your aspects, you have a couple different options, but the two best I recommend are going to be offensive bulwark. While you have an overshield, which you can get from your ward of dawn or from your shield throw, uh, your grenade charges uh, significantly faster and you have increased melee range and damage and their melee final blows extend the duration of your overshield. And you also get an additional shield throw if you're using the sentinel shield super. And also I recommend bastion because you're going to uh, get an overshield whenever you cast your super uh, for nearby allies. And then casting your barricade grants overshield to yourself and nearby allies empowers it, enabling it to slowly regenerate the overshield of allies bunkering behind it and extend their overshield duration. So uh, just getting constant activation of that overshield, making you an even tankier uh, son of a gun. But you also can always pick up the controlled demolition. If you're looking for just a little bit more like explosion and fun, hitting a target with avoidability or volatile explosion makes them volatile. Further damage to volatile target causes them to explode, grants your nearby allies health when volatile targets explode near you. But uh, I just think these other two are a little bit better and have a better ebb and flow. Now, when it comes to our fragments, you have a lot of options, but the four best ones are going to be Echo of Harvest, Echo of Persistence, Echo of Undermining, and Echo of Starvation. Echo of Harvest reads, defeating a weakened target creates an orbit power and a void breach. So we're going to get constant activation of like weakened on targets whenever we hit them with a grenade using Echo of Undermining, which will weaken targets hit by our grenade, which is really, really great. Uh, Echo of Persistence, Void Bus Applied View, Invisibility, Overshield, and Devour have increased duration, making sure we have that Overshield a little bit longer. And we're also going to get activation of Devour uh, whenever we pick up a Void Breach with Echo of Starvation or an Orbit Power to get Devour. Devour feasts on energy of your defeated foes. Final Blows restore you to full health and grant grenade energy and extend Devour. Uh, so again, really great to just add on to that grenade energy, constantly chucking those and making sure that our Heart of Inmost Light is just being used at its best potential. Now we're getting into the Sunbreaker class, getting to use a little bit of that fun solar energy. For the super, you can do Hammer of Soul or Burning Maul. Now Burning Maul has a bit of a shorter cooldown, but I like to constantly use the sunspots that Hammer of Soul activates, even if it has a little bit longer of a cooldown. So uh, pretty much up to you, but I think this one is really great. For abilities, we're gonna have the same exact barricades and jumps to use, but we're gonna have two different melees. First off is going to be the throwing hammer. It is literally a hammer that you can throw and pick immediately back up on the ground. If you don't pick it up over a certain amount of time, it'll just explode and do damage targets. Uh, but note that whenever you pick it up, it will grant you cure. Cure will actually heal you. Uh, so this makes this build really freaking juicy to constantly just run around and throw that. Uh, or you can also use the hammer strike, which is going to ignite and scorch targets with a melee hit. Um, but honestly, if you ever take off a throwing hammer, I'm going to disown you because this is so freaking fun to use. When it comes to grenades, again, we have a lot of options here, but my favorite is going to be the thermite grenade. A grenade that sends forth a burning line of fire dealing damage and scorching targets in its path. Uh, this is great for activating scorch and getting those ignitions. Uh, and also it's just really good for like zoning out or anything. Again, sleeper ones in my opinion are going to be the swarm grenade or the solar grenade. Again, with our aspects, we have three choices here, but the two that I would say are going to be soul invictus, solar ability, final blows, hammer, assault impacts, and feeding scorched targets creates a sunspot. Your abilities regenerate faster and your super drains more solely while standing in a sunspot. Sunspots apply scorch and deal damage to targets inside of them. Entering a sunspot applies restoration. Restoration will regenerate your health and shields over time. So this is giving us essentially little pools on the ground that are going to do damage to enemies while also just healing us and adding us even more energy. Really freaking awesome aspect. I love this one so freaking much because uh, again, it's just really nice to have those like little burning fires around that I can depend on for health and damage. And then second be Roaring Flames. Final blows through solar abilities or ignitions increase the damage of your solar abilities and it stacks three times. So essentially this is just a damage boost for us. Uh, so again, if you get three kills with your throwing hammer, you're gonna have three stacks of this. So your, all your solar abilities are just gonna do a little bit even more damage. You have a third choice in Consecration. Uh, this is a really fun one, actually. I, it's really great with another exotic, uh, but on its own, it's just kind of, you know, normal. And it reads, while sliding, activate your charged melee ability to launch a wave of solar energy forward, damaging and scorching targets in front of you as you leap into the air. While airborne, activate your charged melee again to slam the ground to create a second larger wave damaging solar energy. If the wave hits a scorch target, they ignite. 
So really fun one, but not very necessary. When it comes to our fragments, uh, these again, a lot of options, but I would say Ember of Torches, Ember of Solus, Ember of Tampering, and Ember of Empyrean are the most important ones. Why? Well, first and foremost, uh, Ember of Torches is probably going to be the one that starts it all off. Uh, powered melee attacks against combatants makes you and nearby allies Radiant. Radiant will give you even more weapon damage and also give you the ability to stun barrier champions with your weapons. So first off, that Radiant is just really important to just constantly have you going as much as possible. And just hitting a target with your throwing hammer is going to activate that. So immediately off the bat, it's really great. Next, Ember of Solus, Radiant and Restoration effects applied. You have increased duration. Uh, we're getting that restoration from those sunspots and then obviously rating it from just using our melee. So you're going to have that even higher duration, but we're going to jump on that even more with Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapons or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration radiant effects applied to you. So ensuring that essentially if you are going through a strike or anything like that, you're going to be constantly having these effects uh, on you while you're fighting. And then finally, just a really fun one that I like and I think kind of just like fills this out more than anything. Uh, Ember of Tempering, Solar Weapon Final Blows grant you and your allies increased recovery for a short duration, stacks three times. And then while Ember of Tempering is active, your weapons have increased airborne effectiveness and your Solar Weapon Final Blows create a Fire Sprite. That Fire Sprite is going to be really great for your grenade energy and then also activating, you know, uh, again, kind of like in the Void 1, the Void Breach, having that activate to get those armor charges. And the last subclass we're going to talk about is going to be Arc. So this is going to be the Striker subclass. Again, two choices on your super. You're gonna do Thunder Crash or Fist of Havoc. Fist of Havoc is a roaming super, and I'm not, again, a big fan of those, but it is pretty freaking strong. Uh, but my favorite is going to be Thunder Crash, where it turns you pretty much into a missile, where you just fly through the air and smash into something. It is really freaking fun. Now, a big different part of Arc versus the other two subclasses is the fact that we have another option instead of our barricades, and that's going to be a thruster. Uh, essentially this just kind of like boops you to the side somewhere and i think this one is really good because of its super short cooldown and how it works in conjunction with the heart of inmost most light uh, we can also you know still use that powerful attraction with it so it is really fun if you're just not someone that is really interested in standing behind a barricade we have the same exact jump and then we get into our melee we have options of thunderclap ballistic slam or seismic strike now seismic strike is just going to be like a shoulder charge run into somebody uh, ballistic slam you're going to have to jump in the air while uh, being in a sprint motion and then slam into the ground this one's a little weird but it is a lot of fun to do those ground slams but i would say thunderclap is going to be your best option essentially it gives you a charging punch that no matter what as you charge it uh, it will just do immense amount of damage uh, i would say against you know more powerful combatants hold it down as much as you humanly can for that increased damage. Now, when it comes to our grenades, I recommend Pulse Grenade, kind of like everything that we else we've been using. Uh, it is just a pulsing uh, beam on the ground, so it's going to damage into an area of effect for an extended period of time. I think this one's really great. Um, the other ones are kind of back and forth, depending on what you're really feeling, but uh, I would say the newer one, the Storm Grenade, is a lot of fun to use as well. Now, we have three aspect choices here, and the two I recommend are going to be Touch of Thunder and Knockout. First off, a touch of thunder. Uh, this is going to give all of our grenades an extra ability. And first off, with the pulse grenade, it's going to create ionic traces, uh, which help give us a little bit more ability energy as they seek us on the ground. Um, so this one's just really nice for just a little bit more energy throughout the entire setup. And then with knockout, critically wounding a target or breaking their shield infuses your melee attack with arc energy, increases your melee range and damage for a short time. Being a target with a melee attack starts health regeneration and makes you amplified. Now, being amplified is really important with this setup, uh, so constantly be running around and punching people if you can. The reason why amplified your movement speed and weapon handling are greatly increased after sprinting for a short time, your movement speed is further increased. Rapidly defeating targets with arc damage makes you amplified. So be amplified as much as you humanly can. The third one's gonna be Juggernaut. I really don't recommend this one uh, unless you're doing it for PvP. With full class ability energy and after spraying for a short time, you gain a frontal shield that blocks incoming damage. When your frontal shield breaks, your class ability is depleted. While amplified, the shield blocks significantly more damage before breaking. So again, really cool, but not necessary for PvE. When it comes to our fragments, I recommend using Spark of Recharge, Spark of Ion, Spark of Magnitude, and Spark of Shock. First off, a recharge. While critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerate more quickly. 
Really great whenever you're in a pinch to make sure that you always have those abilities to crutch on. Spark of Ions defeating Jolted targets creates an Ionic Trace, and we're gonna get that jolting from Spark of Shock. Your Arc Grenade jolts targets, which is just really awesome all around. Uh, to constantly have that jolting effect going. And then finally, Spark of Magnitude, your lingering grenades, which is going to be that pulse grenade have extended duration. Now, something to keep in mind with this setup is that you always need to focus if you're going to be doing end game content on this overload, unstoppable and barrier champion. You will have abilities that are going to give us this throughout uh, our subclasses, uh, but sometimes you're going to have to go into your artifact and match it based on the current seasonal mod. Uh, so again, make sure you're constantly keeping an eye on that and making sure that you're matching those so that you're not going into end game content and, you know, <laughs> uh, going against an overload champion with only having an unstoppable and barrier setup. Now, when it comes to the artifact, I don't really like focusing too much on artifacts with a lot of builds just because they change depending on the season. Uh, but if you're coming in during season 22, season of the witch, know that you want to have all of your uh, different stunning abilities as much as humanly possible. Uh, the second column really isn't all that important for you more than anything. Uh, third one is just going to be the elemental orbs. So just pick whichever one works best for you. In the fourth column, you're going to definitely want to try to get this overload one. If you uh, don't already have like, you know, a really solid like hand cannon for that. Uh, elemental fury is really great for stunning champions. Communal pickup is just really great for working in a group and getting uh, a little bit of a damage boost. Uh, refreshing pickups is really great for your power abilities and I really wouldn't worry about semi-auto striker but in the final column monochromatic maestro is a really good one for damage boosting rapid fire rangers great for weakening targets elemental embrace not really all that necessary Ele uh, elemental munitions is great if you need ammo pickups and then frenzied stacks uh, is not necessary for this build now I hope this really helped you kind of give an idea of a build that you can use to start off your time in destiny as a titan I know that I have a lot of other setups on my channel that you can work off of uh, and definitely use the dim links that I have down below and take advantage of that but again hope this is just a good base one for anyone that's doing the new light especially uh, can pick up and start having fun with and enjoying the end game content but thank you again so much for watching i appreciate you all uh, make sure you follow me over on youtube and twitter at birdman778 give a thumbs up on this video comment down below subscribe and become a member again a lot of more end game setups coming up here soon it might do even a beginner build for uh warlock and hunter as well but we shall see until then hope you have a great night day whatever maybe